morning. Oh, nobody's alive. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, much better. All right. Sebastian, have you ever used Wikipedia? OK. Ryan, have you ever used Wikipedia? Maggie? Mary? Oh, Jerry, I know you have for sure. <laughs> Andy? All right, how many people here have used Wikipedia? Oh, good, you're alive. OK, how many people here have edited an article? Edited. About half. How many of you are registered? Let's try that. All right, this is better than a normal audience. That's pretty good. Normal audience, normal modern audience today, everyone's used Wikipedia. And about, oh, something like 10% will have edited. And maybe half of those will be registered. OK, so you're, you're already doing pretty good. So I'm going to ask this question. How did Wikipedia become trustworthy? We all use it. Many of us start all our research there. You probably even tell your kids to go there, but they're not supposed to tell their teachers, of course. Right? And I mean, I have a requirement <coughs> in all the things I tell my students. They can use Wikipedia to start. They just can't finish there. And for God's sakes, don't put it in the footnotes. OK. <laughs> but how to become trustworthy? How? All right, that's the question. And, and I'll, I'll even sort of pile on. How did it become trustworthy in the face of contested knowledge? That is a situation in which there are subjective points of view, no objective facts, and the participants are necessarily going to fight with one another over how, uh, the, uh, what the truth is, like in politics. How come Wikipedia hasn't become ugly? Anybody watch the election in the fall? Anybody on Twitter? Anybody on Reddit? How come Wikipedia didn't d turn into a kindergarten? <laughs> Why a kindergarten fight? How come you send your kids to Wikipedia, but goddamn, keep them off Reddit? Right? <laughs> I don't want my kids going to Reddit. I, I don't want them. I don't want the, you know, I can't help my son. He's on Twitter. I don't want him there. It's, right? Why is Wikipedia not ugly? That's the question I want to pose for you today. OK, so this is uh, uh, you know, 10 minutes to summarize about three years of work. Uh, Professor Feng Shu and I have been looking at this question for a while. And we looked at the 66,000 articles in, about US politics in the English language Wikipedia. We cataloged them all for their red and blueness and purpleness. And we also cataloged all 2 million contrib contributors for their red and blueness. And as, you know, I can tell you the honest fact is that really there's only a couple tens of thousands of editors who really do most of the work. So in fact, the, the act of trying to catalog this is a slightly easier than it looks. It still took three years. Um, and here's the question. Does the red, do the red editors go to the blue articles or do they just talk to the red articles? And do the blue editors go to the blue articles or do they go to the red ones as well? And that's telling you quite a bit. If the red goes to red, if blue goes to blue, then we've got an echo chamber. We've got a situation, just as you find on Twitter, where all the participants are talking to one another, and they don't want to talk to the other side. If you've got a situation where red goes to blue, blue goes to red, they're confronting one another, and they are trying to deal with a different point of view. So what did we find? Well, I've got to show you a lot of statistics, and I think you don't want to see that. OK, so instead, I'll just tell you, uh, red does contribute to blue. Blue does contribute to red. And, there, and to our surprise, there are very few conversations where that doesn't occur. And I, I'm just going to summarize a lot of work in just one statement. Yeah, opposites attract. You don't find many echo chambers on Wikipedia. It, it, it's a kind of amazing. And that's a clue, actually, as to why it doesn't turn ugly. How did that happen? It happened because there are a set of principles and a mission that all the participants sign up for. So in particular, they aspire to a neutral point of view. The editors know that walking in. So do most of the participants. New participants have to be educated. But a neutral point of view is it's not your goal to just have one truth on the encyclopedia. It's your goal to represent a point of view. And so most arguments about how to think about a contested topic get transformed into how to best represent the other point of view, rather than just push uniquely one point of view. 
That sounds subtle, but if you, in, if you implement it on an almost radical decentralized format where everyone understands that's the mission, you get what you find in Wikipedia, which is millions of contributors understanding that the principle they're trying to implement here is a neutral point of view. It's widely publicized. They can look it up. And, and over and over again, the same de get, debates get played out. So you might then reasonably ask, well, what are the limits of that? Can you get a neutral point of view on everything? No, you can't. <laughs> you know, we could go into some detail about where this breaks down. Let's just, add, let's just you know, for the time being, uh, say, where do the pressures emerge? Well, first of all, new, new participants. You have to educate every new participant. And, on, and, and we're talking at a scale of tens of millions. So that's pretty hard to do. Let, let's recognize you have new participants showing up all the time. Uh, and and, they, need to, and they, they run into uh, editors who then ha lose patience with them and try to educate them. Uh, there's still the, the most famous stories when Philip Roth showed up as an anonymous contributor on the Philip Roth page. And, uh, tried to say, no, 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 this is actually what's true. And I'm Philip Roth. I am an authority on the topic. And then the editor said, well, we don't know who you are, so, and then cut them off. OK, so that still does happen from time to time. You know, Philip Roth didn't know the rules. Uh, the second th place where pressures emerge is on verification of facts, because that takes time. So uh, there are, among the principles of Wikipedia that, that the encyclopedia has is that there should always um, uh, be verification to another online source. And you know that can be manipulated, and sometimes uh, people with a point of view will uh, will try to manipulate the source, and then that has to be found out, and it has to be debated, and it takes energy, and it takes time, and it's and it places pressure on this format. And then the last last thing, to, again, to be frank about it, is there are complex topics that just don't boil down to two points of view, and uh, we can we can summarize each other's point of view. The remarkable thing is, in light of these challenges. Nonetheless, it still tends to work. Nonetheless, it tends to be trustworthy. So OK, there are, a couple, there are a couple exceptions. The pages for George Bush and Barack Obama are locked down. You, know, that it's gonna, you have to be registered and be a trusted contributor to get onto them. There are a few pages like that. But uh, by and large, there's this radically decentralized encyclopedia getting contributions from many sources because everyone knows the mission and shares it. And, and that, again, I want to come back to. Repeat over and over again, the norms hold. It remains a civilized conversation. So uh, what lessons do we take from this? Just to, just to be summarize, uh, summarize uh, a, a complex conversation in a, in a couple, uh, uh, couple sentences. First of all, if, you're, if your firm is found in an online dispute, you need to recognize that there will be multiple points of view. Uh, you know, if you're United Airlines today, uh, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be able to get a unique point of view out on Wikipedia. Uh, just recognize it. Uh, and no single voice is going to control the debate. Uh, you, you have to uh, represent your view as best you can. And in fact, the goal is to represent other points of view as best you can. That's, that's how the debates get transformed. You cannot think of Wikipedia as a PR exercise. It, it is, you can't whitewash it. Second thing, actually, I think also very subtle. Many firms uh, run wikis inside their companies, use them as knowledge management systems. Um, if you do that, recognize also the strengths and weaknesses of the format. The format itself can't run on its own. You can't have radical decentralization without a shared mission. So the first thing to recognize is you have to give it a mission and a set of principles. And the second thing is it isn't going to run on its own without having a manager, somebody assigned, if not many people assigned, just to take responsibility for uh, implementing the principles and the mission. And uh, one of the other things I always like to say, this is a little bit separate from our work on this, is one of the, if there's one thing you've learned from Wikipedia is that rewards that is, uh, uh, you know, badges, <laughs> uh, recognition, cer certificates that actually go a long way. Somebody did a good job. Uh, many people don't want to be paid to, be, to make an entry, but they want to be recognized that they were the source of knowledge, that they actually knew something and were helpful. And, and that actually turns out to go a long way to help. 
Uh, finally, let's leave you with a couple of questions to consider. Um, just why is there so much loudish and rude behavior in contested conversation? Why, why is the, does the internet today in many social conversations look like a, a bad kindergarten? I mean, if just why? It doesn't have to be that way. So, so what can we do to think about uh, reforming that? L love to hear uh, if you've seen failed or successful approaches to managing social media and crowds and what works and what fails. Uh, Wikipedia has a particular uh, formula for success. Happy to talk about that in more detail, but also would love to hear your, your comments. And, and then lastly, uh, have you seen a, a civil or rude part, uh, uh, participant online? Surely if you spend any time online, you've seen rude. Okay, so um, how can that hurt a firm's reputation? How do firms manage that better in order not to hurt their reputation? How should we think about that? Okay, so that's what I'll leave you with. And since we're gonna distribute the slide, if you're curious, we, you know, we've actually been working on this a long time, so we're happy to give you something to read too. Okay.